I'm now moving to Yo Sung Yim, your VP, um, a Vice President at the um, Corporate Strategy Center of uh, Yo Sung Corporation, a prominent uh, South Korean conglomerate. And what's interesting is that uh, uh, your company is already embracing natively, to, so, uh, to say so, uh, recycling in all its processes. Could you tell us more about that? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Lucia. Um, for those of you uh, who don't know uh, what Hyosung does, uh, today uh, we have a very uh, diversified business por portfolio, uh, portfolio uh, ranging from textiles to energy, chemicals, and advanced materials. But, uh, but what you have to understand is that uh, Hyosung started out in 1966 as, uh, as a maker of uh, nylon and polyester fiber. And since then, uh, we have expanded these products in, into tire cords, uh, um, carpets, uh, airbags, seat belts, uh, to name just a few. Uh, so uh, therefore, uh, the big portion uh, of, of our recycling pro program in Hyosung uh, revolves around the uh, reuse of uh, pre-consumer and post-consumer uh, nylon and polyester waste. Uh, currently, uh, we can do most of the uh, mechanical recycling of uh, uh, polyester and nylon. Uh, but chemical recycling uh, is much harder. Uh, the, this is because the key uh, success factor uh, in mechanical recycling is actually securing uh, clean, uh, clean waste of nylon and uh, pet products. But uh, for chemical cycling, what you do is uh, you take contaminated, dirty uh, nylon and uh, polyester waste, and you break them down by melting it, and you have to filter out the impurities, uh, the contaminated parts. Uh, you have to single out all the other uh, com com the compounds that uh, you don't need, and you have to single out the, the raw material that you want to actually recycle. So this is very much, uh, much harder than uh, me mechanical recycling. And in this area, uh, Hyosung still has some work to uh, catch up. But um, I think the point that I want to make here is that, um, as you can see, uh, there are many recycled products out there already. I mean, the technology is there. But uh, the problem is, is there a demand for these products currently uh, in the market? Uh, sadly, the answer is no. Um, this is because no, one's, uh, no one is willing to pay for it. Okay? Um, a success story of one of our uh, recycled product is a product uh, named Regen, which is uh, short for regenerated fiber. Uh, what we do is uh, we take uh, uh, used PET bottles, uh, mechanically crush them, and then we use it to uh, uh, remake uh, polyester fiber from that. And uh, currently, we can't make enough of them uh, because the only limitations that we have right now is actually trying to secure more, more of the uh, used PET bottles. Uh, but as there, there's only a limited um, amount of uh, PET bottles re uh, recirculating in the economy, uh, we are very limited. And the demand is, is there. Um, this is because um, apparel brands uh, can use 100% recycled uh, pet fiber to make, uh, to make uh, jackets and uh, a lot of clothing. But, um, but they're willing to take on these uh, higher prices, which, uh, which is about 15 or 20% higher than normal non-recycled pet products, pet fiber. Uh, they're willing to take on uh, this higher cost because uh, actually raw materials, uh, fibers, only account for 20% of the uh, price of clothes, clothing that you all wear. So uh, if you factor in, factor in the pricing is only 15% higher and the raw material accounts for only 20%, the actual uh, price hikes that that the uh, uh, apparel brands have to absorb is only three to four percent, but they're willing to do this because uh, the benefits of uh, in the form of uh, uh, enhanced brand awareness and increased sales uh, from their uh, of their recycled uh, clothing is much higher 
than the uh, cost that they bear uh, buying a recycled product. But uh, this is a, a success story. But uh, the sad uh, thing is that most other uh, polyester and nylon products that we make uh, doesn't share the same story. Uh, one example is uh, uh, recycled spandex. Uh, spandex is the elastic fiber that, that uh, you put in, that you mix with other fibers to give you the stretchy uh, uh, function of your clothing. Um, the thing with uh, spandex is that uh, th you only use 10% of these uh, fibers. Uh, uh, you mix it, you mix 10% spandex with a 90% nylon or a pet, pet fiber. So uh, for apparel brands to actually uh, buy a higher costing uh, recycled spandex into their uh, uh, brands and then calling it, uh, uh, how would you say, eco-friendly products is, is really, uh, I, I don't think uh, any, uh, no uh, consumer will buy that story. So um, they're really reluctant to uh, in buying these uh, other products that, that make up only a small portion of their raw materials. So I think uh, uh, we have to make, uh, uh, we have to make more attention uh, needs to be made to increase demands for products that are already out there. Uh, and I think this is uh, crucial if you want to actually get the uh, circu circular economy going as fast as we, we would like them to. Thank you. So the, the quality of what needs recycling matters, right? So uh, one of your byproducts in your industrial process is hydrogen. Uh, and you're now looking at that as not only a byproduct, but also uh, a source of energy, of course. So tell us more about that. Okay. Um, as, as Lucia just said, uh, Hyosung, uh, we, we produce uh, hydrogen uh, from a, a process called uh, PPDH, uh, the hydrogenation process. Uh, what we do is we take uh, uh, a molecule of propane and we strip it uh, with two molecules of hydrogen. And if you strip uh, propane of two molecules of hydrogen, you get a, a substance called uh, propylene. And if you uh, mix together more pro propylene with each other, it becomes polypropylene. And polypropylene is the raw material that is used, used to make thermoplastics. For example, uh, hard pipes, piping, uh, protective films. So it is the source of uh, 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 plastics that we use every day uh, in, in our lives. But um, with the hydrogen that is uh, produced, generated in the process of making this polypropylene, what we do is, uh, we are taking this hydrogen and we are actually uh, recirculating that into the economy as a fuel for mobility. Um, we're doing that currently uh, as a 50-50 joint venture with uh, Linde of, of Germany. Um, and we produce, uh, we are currently in the stages of building the liquef uh, liquefaction plant. What we're doing is we're liquefying the hydrogen gas. Um, currently, uh, all of the uh, hydrogen that is consumed within Korea right now is uh, supplied in the form of, of gas. But you may ask, then why are you liquef liquefying it? Um, it's really about the economics. Uh, if you have a vast network of uh, pipeline that is just dedicated to the transport of hydrogen, then hydrogen, hydrogen gas makes sense. But without that network, it is far more cheaper to actually transport large amounts of uh, hydrogen to wherever you want within uh, Korea. Uh, this is uh, mainly because uh, uh, liquid hydrogen has a density which is only about 1 800th of hydrogen gas. This means that you can transport 13 times more uh, hydrogen to refueling station or wherever you need it. Uh, Yes, uh, additional costs are borne because we have to actually add the li liquefaction plant. And also, uh, we have to keep the hydrogen low to minus 253 degrees uh, to, to keep it in the form of uh, liquid. Uh, yes, that adds costs to the, uh, to the uh, hydrogen costs. But the savings that we get uh, from the transportation costs far outweigh 
any uh, uh, rises in, in cost. So uh, what we're doing is uh, we're building a hydrogen fueling station, a liquid hydrogen fueling station, and we're targeting uh, non-passenger cars, bigger cars that require more hydrogen, uh, buses and trucks. And um, we are targeting opening up our plant and our uh, uh, refueling station uh, early uh, 2024. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So uh, definitely, besides the byproduct, what is interesting in that example is that um, you become uh, an energy producer. Uh, so uh, renewable, and uh, that, that's, uh, that's also a change in paradigm.